talk today about some of the White Mountain Redware vessels and some of the icons, symbols that we find on them. One symbol in particular on our very famous Thunderbird Bowl is this arrow point. It's repeated in the back of the head of the bird. This is a Thunderbird bringing rain to the village below. It's a very powerful Thunderbird. He has a very arrow point head. We're going to talk about arrow points today. This is a war icon. It's two arrow points touching. That's war. A lot of folks have misinterpreted these symbols as butterflies. Butterflies almost always have the antenna and some other details. But those are not butterflies. That's a war icon. Another one. This is a Pueblo, a symbol of a Pueblo, as the hill and the property place glyph often has the parallel lines. This one doesn't, but many of them have the parallel lines representing the uh, crops. But this Pueblo has an arrow point sticking into it. That could represent the idea that the Pueblo is being attacked. This bowl has this hourglass symbol all over it. Now, this could fall into the category of pretty patterns, because there's really nothing else on this bowl to indicate that that's an arrow point touching or a butterfly. A very famous bowl. This is not a white, well, kind of white mountain red. Where is it? Jedido uh, black on yellow from Hamalavi ruin up in northern Arizona, a little bit north of the white uh, of the white mountain red bear area. But this is very clearly an arrow point <laughs> piercing this unfortunate fellow. He's dying. His legs are splayed upward. His life breath, life wind is leaking out, escaping. He's holding on to the centipede. The centipede is the one pole ladder that the people climbed up from the underworld into this world. And when you're going back to the underworld, you're going to need that centipede ladder again. But there's a very specific arrow point piercing this fellow. This is a very interesting uh, oil. I wish we had the rest of it. It's, it's, it's an oil. It has four corn plants. This is actually a Gainus black on gray. And uh, we know very little, about, very little about this group of potters. They're from northern New Mexico, up in es Escondido area, way up north. And they, they, they look a lot like Membrays, but a lot cruder. Uh, it's a little like Lino black on gray, but there's corn plants. This is a corn plant. These are little tassels. There's another one I'll show you. There's four of these corn plants around the outside of this oil, and then the earth land parallel line symbols below the corn plants. And this corn oya also has a turkey. There's his body, there's his feet, and his head is missing because of this absent sherd. But there's a little turkey in the corn. We see turkeys uh, occasionally on the pottery. There's a very, very fine turkey, stylized. Uh, this is probably a pine dale. It's hard to tell just from the pine dale black on white. It's hard to tell just from one shirt. Another little turkey represented. And now here we go. Now we're into, uh, this is a parrot. Very stylized. There's the head, there's the body, there's the tail feathers. Uh, this is a uh, Quaquina and Pinawa. This is a very interesting pottery type, very late in prehistory, 1400 plus, I'd say 1450. They started using uh, magnesium in their pigments, and the magnesium runs and gets real sloppy when it's fired. Here's a better example. Here's a parrot's head, tail feathers. Now this is a Pinawa glaze on white. These are very late, but these, these glazes ran and they get real sloppy. They're real pretty, though. They're pretty greens and purples. Uh, kind of a pottery series you don't see, very, you don't hear talked about very much. There are more parrots. There's this sloppy manganese, manganese glaze again. You see, these, these are in a lot. There's a parrot, there's just little tail feathers, and they're stylized into this pattern around the rim of the bowl. A great bird here. This is on a, this is interesting, this is a prehistoric copy of Four Mile Polychrome. It's not Four Mile Polychrome. It has all of the features, all of the use of the, the red, the black, and the white, very similar patterns. But this is actually a Point of Pines Polychrome. 
The potters came into the area. They couldn't make four mile. The four mile potters had long since gone from the site, but they wanted to make four mile polychrome and they attempted to, and they did a pretty good job of it. Uh, this bird is a bird, but he has a property place icon in the, as a body. Now, this is probably a, a place name, Bird Clan, Bird, bird Place. Here's another Thunderbird. This is more classic. This form is more, you see this more often. Cloud head. This negative space could actually represent the beak, maybe. This is a very interesting one. It has cloud wings. Now, notice the body. That is a Pueblo icon. Here again, bird place, bird Pueblo. It has the hill, the parallel earthland lines, and then a cloud in the middle, cloud head, cloud wings. This is a Thunderbird form with uh, a Pueblo body. It's the same thing as this, really, as the bird elements and the place elements. Very fascinating. I'm going to toss this in just because it's such a wonderful little bowl. This is a Salado polychrome. Um, actually, this, this is actually probably a Gila polychrome. And this is a wonderful depiction of a thunderstorm. We saw the Thunderbird bringing rain to the village. This is just a fabulous little bowl. It has the Earthland parallel lines, lightning bolts, and all these swirly clouds swirling around the side of the bowl with falling rain. Wonderful little thunderstorm vessel. Just a sweetheart of a vessel. Beautiful iconography on this one.